Hey, this is Chuck Marshall with Metalani, and I'm talking to Steve Tucker from Morbid Angel. Steve, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing really well, man. It's an honor to talk with you. Hey, you guys are awesome. you guys are about a month away from kicking off the Decibel Tour with Cannibal Corpse. Um, it's it's like a dream tour, I think, as far as death metal. Um, you got Necrot and uh, Blood Incantation along with you. Um, and I'm wondering, like, what, what level of preparation do you guys go through as a band to get ready for a tour? Uh, it's pretty much the same for, for every tour. You know, we, we just start rehearsing. Uh, we get in a, a good few weeks of solid rehearsal. And everyone's expected to sort of show up already prepared. I mean, um, so I, I myself, per, I can pretty much give you my routine about, about a month, about a week ago, about a month before I need to get ready to start rehearsing. I start rehearsing at home. I start going over the songs, um, you know, just just on a daily basis and sort of building muscle memory. That way, by the time we get to the rehearsal room, I'm, I'm pretty much already well rehearsed. I, I think everyone everyone involved with Morbid does the same thing. Everybody shows up, you know, ready to go. Awesome, awesome. Um, you guys, I think you mentioned during the tour announcement that you would be adding um, a bunch of older songs in the set list, kind of covering the the span of Morbid Angels catalog. Um, can you give me a sample of some of the the songs you're planning to put in there? Yeah, man, we're doing like uh, blasphemy. We're doing abominations. Uh, nice. You know, from you know, altars, blessed. We're doing some stuff from Covenant. I think blood on my hand. We're doing uh, things from the new album, Skin of Sustain. Something from uh, Formula. I mean, we're doing. We're pretty much touching all of the albums. You know, probably you know a couple songs or so. Yeah, awesome. That sounds that sounds great. Um, I know that. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna go. It'll go over the entire catalog, dude. We'll go, we're, just, we're doing just about something from every album. I yeah. think the only thing uh, album we don't have something from right now is Domination. That could change. Yeah. You know? All right. Um, I know that you know each band approaches set list creation differently. Um, some are kind of you know fairly tight. They like to have a set list so that they go in each show with the same list. Other ones, uh, you know, kind of mix it up a little bit so they get a little variety during tour. Um, how do you guys like to approach it? What is your formula for setting up, picking out songs for a set list? Uh, we always start with way more songs than what we end up with. You know? <laughs> that way, I mean, if, if we were to decide, man, you know, this song just isn't feeling right, right. You know, we, we could switch songs. So, um, so like, uh, I think for this, we're playing, I don't remember, 18 songs or something like that. And, I, and um, I think we've actually listed like 22 songs. So wow, and awesome. plus there's other there's there's songs that we've already played you know tour before that we could pull back out if we want to you know. Uh huh. And will you uh, do you think you'll um, approach it like every night do the same set or will you do uh, mix it up a little bit sometimes? I think it's mostly going to be the it's going to be pretty much mostly the same set every night. I mean, honestly, we have. Uh, because this is a decibel tour, everybody has sort of a, you know, a limited time on stage, so to speak. And I mean, we're literally, man, we've, we've packed as many songs as we can in. Right. To the point where there's not even time for me to, to announce the songs. I'll be <laughs> announcing them as the songs start. Right. So, you know, it's a, it's a, for that, we need to kind of a little bit stick to the set. But, you know, we might end up saying to each other, hey, you know, uh, let's do Day of Suffering tonight. So, yeah. Or whatever you know what I mean, and, yeah. and then we would just do it. We would do it in a spot instead of another song. And we've we've always done that. Yeah. But I'd say I'd say ninety percent of the set will stay. You know, it'll stay pretty much the same. We we have to to a certain extent because we use six string guitars, we use seven string guitars, and it's like uh, we have to have a you know we have to have a sort of solid uh, set to know that way our, our people know when we we change guitars, etc. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. So playing, you know, the, you know, metal and especially death metal, um, that can be pretty physically demanding. Um, is there anything special that you do while you're out on the road to make sure that you're, you know, like at your peak, like for each show? The most important thing is, for me is to basically not get ill. Right. To, to try to avoid illness at all costs. No. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I shake a, <laughs> pardon me, I shake a lot of hands things like that. So I'm having to wash my hands a lot, take vitamin C, euthanasia, um, you know, these airborne, these airborne gummy boosts I have here at home, I'll probably have with me on tour this time. Just anything you can to, to stay healthy, man. It's kind of hard, you know, a lot of right. places you play and, what, and then you come off stage and you have to go to the bus and sometimes you're wet. 
you know, um, so, so you're, you know, and then you might meet five fans on the way that hold you up and then you're stuck outside and you're wet. So, you know, you have to just try and do your best to stay warm, stay, uh, stay dry and, and not get ill, man. Because once you get ill, everyone on the entire tour is going to get ill. Right. And it's going to take weeks to get that shit off the bus, you know? Yeah. 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 Cause you guys are in close quarters with each other. So Morbid Angel and uh, Cannibal Corpse, you guys are, are legendary bands. Morbid Angel, you know, is probably one of the most influential death metal bands ever. Um, does it ever, uh, does the level of fan and peer uh, attention ever put any pressure on you or the, or the rest of the band when you're getting ready to, you know, either do a tour or even when you're in the studio? Man, to be honest with you, I, I think that that, I think that everyone involved at Morbid Angel, not only now, but anyone's ever been involved in Morbid Angel, sort of, uh, they already have that, that inner drive to, to make the, the songs, the shows, whatever, everything perfect anyway, man. So it's, it's, it's really, honestly, I don't think any, any sort of pressure is bigger than what I apply to myself and what Trey applies to his stuff. So. Yeah. Everyone else involved, man. You know, it's, it's just one of those things where, I mean, I, um, everyone knows the expectation. And I mean, uh, you know, I, I mean, I give a hundred and, you know, 10% every single day, dude. Every single day on stage, I lose serious weight and water. And just, <laughs> I mean, you know, right. give, give it a hundred percent, man. You know, you just do everything you can to make it be the, the best show that everyone there sees, you know, and that's, it's not always perfect, dude. I mean, a lot right. of shit was like, you know, it, it, it's a, you know, it's kind of off the hook, man. It's, everything can go bad in a, in a second. So, I mean, it's always an adventure dude, as well, man. But I think that everyone involved is uh, top notch and make sure that it lives up to what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So, um, do you ever uh, like just kind of stop to think the the level of influence you've had and that morbid morbid, morbid angel has had on death metal in general? I mean, does that, do you ever think about that? I know it seems to be the, the, the drawing, um, the place where people draw names for bands from it. It seems like if it's a Morbid Angel song, it's also a band name. Right. That's not all you know. So, so you got uh, basically like um, the Decibel Tours last in just about a month, um, and then uh, you're done. So what's, what's the plan for the rest of 2019 for Morbid Angel? I think, you know, I'm going to actually myself start writing some new music, and I think Trey will probably start writing some new music. We'll probably do a couple more tours throughout the year. Uh -huh. uh, we have some stuff that, that's being talked about now, but nothing in concrete, you know. But I, I just said it's that time. It's been, you know, it's been a year and a half, a year, or a little bit over a year since the last album came out. I've kind of got the urge and the desire myself to, to write some more music, you know. So start getting into that and, uh, you know, continue doing shows, man. Awesome. So, um, from all the songs that are in the, you know, vast Morbid Angel catalog, uh, what's your most favorite to play and, and why? You know, uh, lately I've been, you know, rehearsing Blood on My Hands and man, I, that, that's just a great fucking song. It's yeah. got some really cool things in it. Um, I, I, I have to say, man, the seven string song just across the board, you know, it's, you know, that, it's so much sludgier and you know so heavy and nasty and stuff. So I, I think through the years, man, all the all those seven string songs have been pretty much groundbreaking type right. stuff, and, and that, it's all really fun the way you know it's fun, it's fun to play like a song like from where to Sli where the slime lives, man. Yeah, God, I mean, that shit's great. Or, or like summoning redemption from gateways. You know those songs are just fantastic to play, dude. They're so heavy. You feel it on the stage. You feel the heavy. It's, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. Do, do you still feel the, the same level of excitement for uh, for death metal that you did when you started off? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, the, the only real difference now is that I really know way more what I'm talking about than I did. <laughs> I guess, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm way more uh, mature, obviously, and I'm way more knowledgeable than I was, you know, early on. Early on, it was, you know, a, a discovery of something more intense something more extreme something you know even heavier than thrash metal when yeah that metal first came about but i mean you know now it's you know for me it's 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 been a part of my life dude for so many years that i mean for me there is no me without death metal you know? awesome cool man hey uh steve uh i got just one more question for you uh what do you like for breakfast yep. 
man, you know, usually for breakfast, I'll have like a like a sausage croissant or something. You get these frozen um, microwave things <laughs> or, or, an egg, or an egg sandwich, man. I, yeah. I, really, uh, I don't really like too much, you know, too much in the morning. I don't really, you know, want to eat too much. Um, right. Actually, man, I'm not a huge eater, dude. I'm not, I kind of eat a little bit here and there as, as time goes on when I'm hungry. It's, I'm not one of those guys that waits all day for that uh, big humongous steak at the end of the day. It's <laughs> really not my thing. <laughs> awesome. Well, Steve, I appreciate you t uh, taking the time to talk with me, man. Yeah, no problem, brother. Have a great day, man. All right, you too, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks, man. Yeah, see ya.